All right, guys, a little dusty, a little rainy out here today, but we just got our delivery from Jamaica Cottage Shop. How's it going, you guys? It's Stephen from Break Free Homestead. Today, we are popping open this 12 by 16 shed in a pack. JamaicaCottageShop.com. Um, I'll drop a link down below. This is a 12 by 16, and over here, we have a lean-to. It's gonna be 16 by eight. Um, Pre-cut kit. Super easy to install. We're gonna pop it open. We just got our site, um, a tree cut down. Let me show you over there. All right, so this wasn't a great spot for a shed to be dropped. So we have to go with the pre-cut kit and we'll install it up here. Or you could just build it yourself. But these are sweet sheds, um, so we're gonna do that. The shed's gonna be over here and the lean-to over here. We had to cut a decent size oak down over there. Um, but what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna get our skids out and then we're gonna find level. A couple cool things already. Make sure you read through the directions before you start tearing this apart. Everything's color coded in here. It says where it goes. You can see orange roof, it'll tell you what it is. And then your blue is for the floor. And I just took off all that plywood and you're staggering your three quarter inch plywood. It's already pre-cut. How cool is that? So our skids are a little bit ways down, but uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just pull off everything on top of it and then uh, we'll get our skids out. Now we could start low. All right, you guys, so we just got these two beams, which are the skids, the bottom hemlock pieces that are gonna hold and support your shed. We got them placed on here, and they are nice and level all the way down and across. We just used a joist, set it across, and check that. So that's all set. We got, obviously, one up there, two, two, three, two, two. So a little bit of a uh, unlevel area here. We just tamped it down and uh, put those in there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our floor framing on, our floor joists. Um, before we go ahead, I squared this. Um, we measured across to make sure it's close and then measure square. So corner to corner on both sides, they should be pretty darn close. I'm gonna get after it. I'm just gonna lay all these floor joists out. They do provide hardware. They provide everything you need, all the nails. I'm not hand nailing this. I have my electric framing gun that I'm gonna be using, just some Metabo. Um, shank uh, treated nails. Make sure you're using the right treated or untreated nails. Um, you can use treated inside, but if you do an exterior nailing, you need to use treated. So I'm gonna put these floor joists on here and uh, it's just gonna be roughed in on the two end pieces and then you have to square that again. So make sure that is square too. What I'm gonna do now is just crown all these boards. So that means your curve, if it's bowing, 
you look down it, it's gonna be on the top. That way, it doesn't sag prematurely if you go down. All right, so this is nice and square now, and it tells you exactly how much in the manual. Um, I just got ahead of myself and started toenailing each skid. They say two to four nails in each one. Um, so we're gonna get those in there, but first I'm gonna do our blocking. It's, it calls for blocking at four foot and eight foot on this specific dimensions. Um, so I just measured four foot, eight foot both sides. I'm gonna chalk a line and then we'll nail all those in. Then I'll do all my toenails just because when you're putting blocking in, if you have a little bit of wiggle room in the joist, it's a little bit better. All right, with all those blocks in, those toenails in, nice and tight, let's get to the next step. All right, in a second, I'm gonna plop up this three quarter inch plywood that they give you. They do give you the nails. I'm just gonna be using a pneumatic siding gun with some nice ring shank exterior nails. Um, you could probably get away with interior nails, but you know, if you bring in like something wet, like a snowblower or something, it might rust it out or whatever. But yeah, I don't have a battery siding nailer, so we're gonna get after it. So right there it hung off a little bit, uh, it's pretty darn close, I just wanted to make sure it was nice and flush so I just trimmed it off. Here I have a 4x4 corner post laid out, ready to go. We're going to stand them up, toenail these in. And we're going to put it up right here, just straight in the corner. And it recommends using two on the outside, um, or more if necessary. This is a rough cut shed, um, so I'm probably just going to do four, one on each side. Um, obviously trying to hit the, the floor joist because there's nothing right here. So. Sometimes working by yourself has its set of challenges. I'm just trying to get it nice and flush on this corner here with my speed square. Well, keeping it still.
we're gonna knock all these out uh, and it's gonna tie it together when we put our top beams on. So it's not that sturdy right now, but once it's together, it's gonna be legit. All right, I got our center posts in here and got this first beam up. What I did was just tack it into the ends through the top. So once we centered this, it just toe nailed those in here. Everything's gonna be tied together once you connect the whole frame. So let me carry up this next beam and uh, get it placed. center post is in, we're going to tie both sides together. piece on each side with the lap and we have one base in the bottom and then 42 inches up and then we'll hit our long piece right there so let's get after it So now we're gonna go around and just put all these nailers over here. Uh, the windows are showing a lot on this side, but we're gonna switch it up to this side since we're putting, that was trippy with the camera. We're putting a lean-to on this side and they're gonna hang some kayaks there. So we don't want windows right there. They're gonna be on the other side. Make sure you switch it up, super simple. Doing this by myself, I'm just using a clamp to hold the other side and then you get it pretty close and you can just do it right after you pin it on the other side. 